So, welcome to the Conversations with Kelly show. So, tonight I've got a really special guest, and her name is Linda Evans. And I'm quite excited about her because we met a couple years ago at a women's conference, and we didn't actually really officially meet, but we knew that we were both at this conference. So, it was pretty cool when we found out later that we were at the same conference. So, Linda has this amazing energy that I just love about her, and she's just, oh, she's just a sweetheart. So, I'm looking forward to chatting with her tonight and to see if she will help reveal some of the self-destruction that she did in her life and how she shifted that into becoming the powerful woman that she is. So, why am I doing this show? I always talk a little bit about why I'm doing it. I know that people have said to me many times, Kelly, you're playing small. You're not playing big. You need to play big. And I didn't really understand that. I kind of I kind of knew I wasn't playing big, but I was scared. I was scared to step into that role because I was worried about what other people were going to think of me. And I didn't want to lose friends. And I didn't want people to think that I was trying to be somebody that I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And there was many times when I was letting that little belief stop me from being who I wanted to be. Even when I made the decision three years ago to become a speaker, even that decision alone was a tough one for me because I kept thinking, what is everybody going to think of me if I do this? And then I thought, I'm not Anthony Robbins. I don't, I can't be a speaker. I can't be like him. I don't have that mega personality. I don't have that, you know, that power and that energy and that, that, you know, motivation, like that way to motivate people the way he does. And I was scared that in order to be a speaker, I had to be that way and be that person. And when I realized is that I don't have to be that person. I can just be me. I can just be my authentic self who is a burn survivor, who got burnt when I was two years old, who had to deal with tons of staring and teasing and rejection and all those self-sabotaging self things that stopped me from being who I was. I could just be me and I could be a speaker, I could be a writer, I could you know, do all these things that I wanted to do. But all I had to do was put the intention out there of what I wanted to do. And when I did that, and I stopped worrying about what everybody else was thinking of me, that was when things started to come to me. For example, I always wondered if men in wheelchairs could have sex. And I know this might sound kind of crazy, but it was true. It was a thought that I had. And I thought, what can they? And so what happened is, in my travels, I, I met a man who was a film producer. And he was telling me that he was interested in looking for new projects. And I said to him, well, I've got an idea for you. He said, OK, what is it? I said, have you ever wondered if men in wheelchairs could have sex? And he goes, yeah, I have. And can they? And I said, well, I don't know. I think we should find out. $20,000 later, I had raised the money to $20,000, and we were producing a documentary that ended up on TV. And uh -huh. here's the thing. At first, I didn't know if I could do it. And I had the thought, can I really do this? Like, can I really create a documentary that could be put on TV that is about sex and disabilities? And of course, I could have been worried about what other people were thinking of me because that's a touchy subject, right? But I thought, you know what, I've got this curiosity. And here's what happened. When I put it out there, I want to do this, the universe provided everything for me. It mm. provided me with a doctor who was dying for this content. This doctor was like, yes, I'm on board. And he was able to help us with some of the funding. And he's part of the show. And then all of a sudden, some other people came in, into the picture. And the doctor had people that we could interview. And all of a sudden, all these things were all coming into place. And next thing you know, five months later, I'm actually producing and filming this documentary. A couple years later, it ended up on TV. So if you're going to let other people's opinions affect you and stop you from achieving your dreams, you are never going to get where you want to go in life. So you need to take those steps to stop listening to the people who are not going to support you or your dreams. You need to have people who empower you, which is why I love Linda. Because when we talk on the phone, we have this energy and this 
this incredible power. And we haven't talked on the phone that many times. We've only talked a couple times. But when we do, when I get off that phone, I am just like so fired up and I just can't stop working. That's why you need to have people like Linda or myself or other people who empower you in your life. So Linda, I want to thank you again for being a part of my show. And you know, I, I can't wait to, to see what we're going to talk about today. I, I don't have a prepared list of questions. I basically just ask my higher source what I want to know, and then we're going to go from there. All right. Well, first, just let me say to you, Kelly, it is an honor to share this platform with you this evening. Thank you so much for the invitation. But I think I have a great topic for us. After hearing what you just said, let's talk about embrace your DNA. Oh, well, that sounds exciting. Okay, go for it. Okay. And the reason why I say that, too many times we find ourselves wanting to please everybody else and we forget that we have been blessed with a life which is truly a gift and that we have, we've been given uh, a journey for a destination pertaining to something special that we are to do. We all have gifts, talents, and abilities that makes us very unique. There isn't anyone who has the same fingerprint as you have. You're different. You're unique. You're a masterpiece. And when we can see ourselves as being special, but not being uh, arrogant or condescending, not in that manner, but seeing ourselves as one who can make a difference in the lives of others and come from that place of serving. And the reason why I mentioned embrace your DNA, I always look at those letters, the D for destination, the N is to navigate, and the A is to help you become aligned, agree, and accept who you are. So how about that? I, I think that is awesome because that's what it is. It's all about embracing ourselves, embracing our differences, and you know, and honoring that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be very easy for me with a burn survivor that I am and with the visible scars that I have and with all the rejection, it would be very easy for me to just say, well, nobody loves me or yeah. I'm not good enough right. and you know, I'm not beautiful enough or I don't deserve this. And so that's why I believe it's important for us to embrace our differences and take our gifts and then use them for our advantage. Absolutely. And we have to also look at within ourselves, go very deep inside. I call it rediscovering who you really are. Because when you think about it, Kelly, when you were a girl, I know for myself, when I was a girl, I had these big dreams, not small dreams. They were big dreams. I felt that anything that I set my mind to, that I could accomplish it and never ever doubt it. But as I became older, becoming a woman, and started listening to everybody, giving me ideas, oh, I think this is what you should do uh, as far as a career, uh, this is the guy you should marry, uh, this is the way you should live, and I began to allow all of the family my circle of influence to truly influence all of the decisions I was making for my own life. And I think, I, I shouldn't say this, but I think a lot of women have found themselves doing just that, wanting to please, wanting and thinking by pleasing you're going to be happy. But what we find is when we continuously just keep giving giving and giving and not allowing ourselves to become more fully of who we truly are, we find we become unhappy. We find discontentment with our own lives. So we have to take a step back. And that's what I did on my journey. And I call it my journey to wholeness. Um, I took a step back and reevaluated my entire life. And once I did that, I made decisions and I stayed and I stood firm in my decisions. And once I once that happened, it wasn't easy. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. When you are making a shift in your life, it is not going to be easy. You're coming out of your comfort zone. But we have to persevere. 
And if you believe in yourself and you love yourself enough and you know you're worthy of it, you will continue. There are ways, there are support systems there to help you along the journey. And I always say to anyone, you can never be successful by yourself. It's impossible to do it. You will need help. And there is nothing wrong with reaching out and asking the right people for help. You isn't, isn't that the truth? That is so true. <laughs> You know, because I know I would not have gotten where I am by mm -hmm. by having not having the right support system. For example, when I decided I wanted to be a speaker, you know, my ex-husband was telling me, well, how can you do that? Mm -hmm. You know, how can you be a speaker? Speakers don't make any money. And, you know, I mean, who are you to think that you can be a speaker? Like, it's, it's hard to do. It's not an easy thing to break into. And mm -hmm. I said, well, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I'm going to do it. And then when I talked to one of my mentors who makes, you know, $20,000 an hour just to speak, mm -hmm. and he said, Kelly, you have to be a speaker. You know, you, this, your story is going to empower others to, mm -hmm. you know, go and live a better life. You must be a speaker. Like, you don't know how you're going to do it, but you will do it. So I was so glad that I had that mentor in my life who supported me and mm -hmm. steered me in the right direction. Absolutely. And... You know, Kelly, there is a message in all of us. Is the ones who are willing to embrace it and step into it and share it. Because as you share your story, you're blessing somebody else. You're making a difference in someone else's life. And that's what we're here to do, is to impact, influence, and increase someone's life. That's, I, I truly believe that. That's, what's, that's why we're powerful. We are powerful beings. Well, and to give somebody hope. Absolutely. I mean, I don't know how many people have come up to me and said, you know what, Kelly, thank you. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm willing to live one more day because you've given me hope. If you can go through all that, Absolutely. you know, my life is nothing compared to what you've been through. Mm -hmm. You so, help someone. That's, that's right. what you're supposed to do. I believe in the S. I call it the big S. Serve. We're here to serve and make a difference in the world. And as we give, you better believe, get ready, because you're going to receive. As you give, you receive. That's just the, that's, that's the way the universe works. <laughs> okay, so was there ever a time when you looked in the mirror and you didn't like what you saw? Absolutely. There was so a tell us. Tell us about that. I always like to dig in and get the pain. <laughs> was a time and it was um, I would say about 15 almost 15 years ago I took time I was I had been married for almost 25 years and I wasn't happy and the marriage wasn't getting any better and I was staying in the marriage because of our children I wanted my children to have a, a good home and be able to provide for them. And I had seen, you know, single moms and how single moms struggle. I didn't want that for myself, and I certainly did not want that for my children. So I was t pulling. I was torn. What am I going to do? Am I going to stay in a relationship where I was not valued, where I was not respected? I mean, I was a respected um uh, uh, in privacy, nor in when we were out in the public. I mean, he just simply did not respect me. But looking in from the outside, you never would have known that there was a problem until he opened his mouth. I mean, everyone thought, you have everything you want. Why would you want to divorce, get a divorce? And Kelly, I dug deep, and I found the strength within me to give it all up. Home, clothing, I walked away from everything. And I do mean everything. And I'm glad I did because it helped me to become the woman that I am today. I'm much stronger, I'm much wiser, 
I make better decisions. I am not living to please everybody because if I had listened to everyone, I would have stayed in a marriage where I was not happy. I was not being fulfilled. I was not being respected. I was not being loved. And that is not a good marriage. So it was my decision to end it. I did it. And now I am happily married. I am fulfilled. I am loved. I am respected. And I have everything that I have always wanted. And that is the God's honest truth. That's, that's so awesome. I know that there's you know tons of people that stay in loveless marriages. I, I've got lots of friends. I, in fact, I was one myself for 24 years. I was in my marriage, and you know, and then people say, and I wanted out. It took me two years to leave because I exactly, I totally relate to what you're saying, Linda. Because I felt everything that you were feeling. I mean, I've got kids. How dare I want to be happy? How dare I want to make my kids unhappy That's right. so that I can be happy? Mm -hmm. That was huge for me. Like you know, the guilt of that. And you know, and my mom was just totally upset with me, and she wanted to, you know, yell and scream at me. She she did it to my sister and my brother. She told them how upset she was, and I didn't want to listen to her because I felt, you know what? I've been in this marriage for 24 years. Mm -hmm. I think I know if I'm in love with him or not. Yes. And I'm too young. I was only 44 at the time, as so I'm too young to to live in a loveless marriage. And. <laughs> I'm like you. I'm very happy to, you know, not be in that that situation. Absolutely. And one of the things that I, f I have found that controls one's power is when you make a decision to do something and you begin the journey and then you start, what if I hadn't? What if I had not made this decision? What if I had not started this? What if, what if, what if? When you make a decision and you know it is the right decision that you're making, don't play the what if game. Because when you start doing that, you're consistently looking back. You're not looking forward. You're constantly looking back at where you came from. And when you're looking backwards, you can't see what's ahead for you. So I always say, stop the what if and start saying, what is, what is, what is, so stay on that what is happening and love where you're going and look ahead because it's just like when you're driving. If you're driving a car and you're constantly trying to look in the, back, in the rear view mirror and not look ahead, what happens? You can crash, right? Because you're not paying attention through the windshield to see what's coming to you. So if you're not looking up ahead, you can easily be distracted and you can miss the blessings that are facing you. So you want to be positioned. That's important to be positioned for where you are going. And you got to believe in yourself. That's important too. Because if you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. And the other thing is being you. Do you be you? That's important. Being authentic because you've been created to be who you are. So I say again, learn to embrace you, love yourself. If you don't love yourself, no one else will because they're gonna see that you don't love yourself. Why should I waste my time, my effort putting into you where you don't even care about yourself and respect yourself, love yourself. It's important to do those things. You and, and you're so right. And that's one of the things that I love about my new program that I'm just launching in February. It's called You're More Than Enough. And it's all about how when we have a lot of chaos in our lives mm -hmm. and we're being destructive and we're sabotaging ourselves, we are not going where we want to go in our life. Mm -hmm. And we are stopping ourselves from achieving those goals and we are always looking back. You know, I mean I, I've done that too, that what if game. And mm -hmm. what if I didn't leave? You know, what would my life look like? And all of a sudden, I remember, I, I wouldn't have achieved, you know, the top 10 most influential speaker. I wouldn't have got the, the medal from the queen. I wouldn't have got the Woman of Distinction Award because I wouldn't have truly been able to follow my passion, which right. is to be a speaker and share, you know, my message or my story and, and develop these programs and stuff. Now I have that freedom to do that. Yes. And, 
you need to have that in your life. You need to be able to believe yourself and love yourself. And that's what my program is all about. Deal with the pain. Let's get over that pain because we all have it. We all have those fears. Let's deal with it. And then let's put you back together so that you can love yourself. Because Absolutely. when you can love yourself and what you are meant to do, yes. it's amazing. Oh, yes. The world opens up for you. It truly does. Doors will open. Opportunities will exist. You will be amazed at what happens in your life. It, I always look at it like this. Sometimes it's almost like I have to pinch myself and say, I am not dreaming. This is really happening in my life. I am living the life that I know that I am supposed to be living. And when you can get to that place, that's a powerful place to be existing in. Now, I'm not saying that even when you get to that place that you're not going to have problems, that there will be days that you got to push, pull, pull yourself up because we are human beings. We do have those days where we're kind of down and out. But what I do when I find myself feeling somewhat discontent about my life in any uh, in, with a situation or a problem that may arise with my kids or a friend or anything. I go away. I go to my closet. I take some deep breaths and I meditate. And then I begin to say, I am thankful. I am grateful. I am truly blessed. I thank you for my life. I thank you for my health. When you start appreciating and saying it outwardly about the things that you are grateful for, you will see such a shift in your attitude. Anytime that you're feeling down, all you have to do is just start looking at what you're grateful for. And when you are grateful, it takes you to a whole new level. Your playing field is a lot more level and smoother, and the journey becomes a lot easier. But as I stated a moment ago, there will be detours on that journey. But the great thing about a detour, what does it do for you? It still gets you to where you're supposed to go. So that's what we always have to keep in mind as we're on this journey of our of life. That's basically what it is, the journey of life. You will have detours uh, or curveball will be thrown to you. But you know what? You watch that curveball good enough and before you know it, you will hit a slammer and it will be a home run. And I know that. Life is what we make of it, Kelly. We have control of every situation we face. It's the decisions that we make. That, that is the key to it. If you make good decisions, your life will be good. If you make poor decisions, you expect for it not to be the way that you want it to be. And in making decisions about your life, sometimes you have to weed out people. That's a part of your circle. And if you have to weed them out, then you should do just that. And that's what I had to do with my ex-husband. I could not grow old with that man. I couldn't. And I refused to. I wasn't going to grow old and be unhappy. I felt that as my life progressed, I should progress and be happy. And that's why I chose to do what I did. And I'm glad I did. Was I, it easy? I know exactly what you're saying because I, I feel the same way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, the big question people say to me is, how did you throw away 24 years? You know, and, and everybody's, you know, all of our family and friends were shocked because they thought we had this, like, amazing marriage because, you know, we were just, we just seemed so good together. Mm -hmm. But ne they didn't know how unhappy I was. And they didn't see me crying, you know, for two hours every night wondering why I was, you know, doing this to myself and not allowing myself to grow and, and end something that wasn't working for me. Yes. So, I understand. I heard on the, the evening news today, uh, Captain and Tennille, they're getting a divorce after being married for 38 years. Wow. They didn't say why, 
but they just said after 38 years of marriage they have decided to call it quits. But you know, it really isn't anybody's business why they chose to end their marriage. It's between the two of them, but as individuals, I will say it again, we have to make good decisions for our lives. If you want to have a good life and be happy, it's up to you. Nobody can put pull uh, happiness out of the sky and then place it inside of you. You have to do the work. And sometimes others are looking for somebody else to make them happy. And it doesn't work like that. You have to make yourself happy. You're the one who has to do the work. You're the one who has to be prepared. You have to have the plan. You have to execute it. Just like you go to work and prepare, plan, execute, you have to do the same things with your life. Life is it's almost like a job. It is work. Life is a, is a, is a, a work in progress. That's exactly what it is. If you're not willing to do the work, then you won't get the results that you would love to have. It's as simple as that. That's how I see it. And that's why I always talk about embrace who you are. Embrace your DNA. Yes, you have a destination that you are to fulfill in life. You, are, you weren't put here on this earth just to occupy space. You were placed here for a purpose. And it's up to you to find out what that purpose is and to fulfill it. And in order to reach your destination for your purpose, there is a system. I call it the GPS. You have a GPS system inside an inner GPS that guides you along the journey. And if you just take the time and listen, be still sometimes, and, so, and turn off the TV, turn off the phone, take time and be quiet, be still, and listen to what is going on in your life. You'll be amazed at what you will see. And then the other is to accept who you are and celebrate you. See, we don't celebrate ourselves enough. We celebrate other people. We're good for celebrating someone else. But, why yeah, but, but there's a reason for that. You know, I remember in when my grandma was still alive, and I still remember my grandma saying, "Oh, look at so and so; they're bragging." Mm -hmm. And you know, some people would say that, and they would, and they would feel that way when you're celebrating who you are. But you know what? When you become very confident in your own skin, you know you're not bragging. You're not bragging about you. You know that. You're bragging about why you're here and what you're doing and why you are important because we all are important we all are needed for something here if you were not needed if you didn't have a purpose believe me you wouldn't be alive today it's as simple as that and I believe yeah. that. okay so was there ever a time maybe when you were a young girl or something or even in your early marriage was there ever a time when you you were playing some head drama. Like I, I talk about in one of my modules, I talk about stop the head drama. Where, you know, I've been in situations where, you know, you're, you're mad at somebody and you just keep replaying that situation over and over and over in your head. And then you come to the realization, it's not even helping me. Why am I doing this? Oh, right? I, like, yes. Have, have you ever talked about a situation when you had some head drama? that just wasn't serving you and and how and then you maybe felt bad about it because it was such a waste of time I can ex and a perfect story a, a perfect story I like to share with you is my mother um, my mother did not raise me I was raised by my my paternal grandmother and it always played in my head why did my mother give me to my father did she not love me enough? Did she not think I was good enough? Uh, even though I had a wonderful childhood. But again, I'm talking about the what ifs because that was going on in my head. It was drama. And it, it, it made part of me bitter when I was around my mother at times. But I had to let it go, Kelly. I had to because if I did not, it was preventing me from becoming whole myself. So 
I had to sit down with my mother and ask her some very direct questions that she honestly did give me answers to and it really helped our relationship and I was able to let it go and that's important I had to let it go because if I did not let it go I wouldn't be who I am now okay so my my question to you is how did you let it go because I know that there's times there's you know people say Kelly you have to let it go you have to let it go mm -hmm. and you know and then there's times when I absolutely can let it go and then there's other times where it's like I don't want to let it go it you know it just you know you just can't get it out of your head so if you had to give somebody some advice on how to let something go mm -hmm. what would you say how, how do you how do you how do you let it go the first thing I would say is accept what it is okay what you're holding on to number two is if you cannot in most cases it's something that you need to forgive when we're saying let it go you need to forgive something if you cannot forgive it then you have to understand that it's going to prevent you from getting everything that is promise to you in this lifetime it, it, it will hamper it and the third thing that I would say if you can't do it on your own by letting it go get professional help there is nothing wrong with again asking for help go up to a counselor go if you need a psychiatrist but you need to get professional help to help you to move forward because if you don't let it go it makes you become bitter and trust me on this when you have something it's almost like a cancer when you have something inside of you it's not happy it just keeps breathing inside your mind it will eventually begin to affect your health it will and then you begin to have health problems it's not worth it if you cannot let it go get the professional help you need to move forward but don't allow it to control you. You're a bigger person than that. You can take control of the situation. One of the things that I found to help me is meditation. And I know that without, I'm a woman of faith and I do believe that I have been designed and so have you and others who are listening to what we're sharing tonight. We have been created by the Creator. And we are here at this time for a specific reason. You and I, it was no accident that we're having this conversation tonight. This was already pre planned. We're just, we're making it happen. We're carrying it out. So get help to help you to become all that you're meant to be. If you cannot forgive, this is something that I've learned. If I can't forgive, then when I need to be forgiven and somebody can't forgive me, you know, it works both ways. We are supposed to forgive and we are supposed to let go. We can't hold on to the past. Whatever has happened before, you cannot change it, but you can make your future better. And that's what you need to concentrate on, on your future not the past, but sometimes you have to address the past in order to make your future brighter. Does that make sense? Absolutely. You know, we do have to address our past, um, but I, I don't believe that we have to live in our past. No, we do not. Absolutely. No, that's why we need to move forward and live in the future, our present and, and into the future. And be happy. Yeah. We, we're not supposed to be sad. We aren't. We're supposed to be happy and enjoying life. Yes, every day is not going to be a day, a day of roses. No. But at the end of the day, you should always be feel good about your life. Especially. You help, you're a healthy person. Oh, my God. You're beautiful. Everyone should see the beauty that they have within them. Yes. So, Linda, what's your favorite book? Oh my God! <laughs> I know I threw you off guard. Yes, you but... did. And you know, and I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> but I don't know. I was I was just guided to ask you what's your favorite book. 
Okay, my favorite book is truly Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. I love that book. What's it called again, sorry? Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. Oh, interesting. <laughs> well, my favorite book lately has been The Big Leap. Okay. All by right. Gay Hendricks. Oh. And the the reason it's been a great book for me is because of the limiting beliefs mm -hmm. and how people reach an upper limit and mm -hmm. they think once they reach that limit they don't want to break through or they can't break through and they have all these upper limits that stop them. So mm -hmm. I've been enjoying that book. Well I did the audio book and I'm on doing it my second time because I know that I didn't pick up everything that I wanted to pick up. Mm -hmm. So why why is that book your favorite? Because he takes you through steps and stages explaining that we all have been created for a purpose and to help you to obtain your purpose, giving you the methodology of uh, making it happen. And I am a person, I have always believed that we are all here for a purpose. Even when I was a little girl, I knew exactly what I was going to be doing when I became an adult. Did you really? Oh, I did. And I said it. See, I was one of these girls that never knew what I wanted. Oh, I did. Like, I, I knew I wanted to do a lot of things. I just could not settle on one career. Just couldn't. Well, I always knew that whatever I did, I was going to be making a difference for women and girls. I knew that when I was eight years old. I knew it. That is fabulous. I, like I said, I honestly, you know, I've looked back at my life to think, was there ever a time when I said, yes, that's what I want to do for my life? I never really knew. I never knew it. I never had one career that I had to do. My mom wanted me to be a nurse because mm -hmm. of my burns. So she thought I would make a great burn nurse because I would know what that's about. I didn't like the idea because I knew that my hearing wasn't good enough for it to be a nurse. And I, it just didn't appeal to me to go back to school for four years to become a nurse. <laughs> yes, yes. But I'm really excited that I did discover my passion was to be a speaker. And I knew that, you know, I, at the time when I was deciding, I was thinking, what can I do? And it was like, well, and, and this is going to sound bad, but I kept saying, well, you can sell yourself. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I didn't mean that in a sexual way. Well, I understand. I, I, I meant that that I had skills inside of me mm -hmm. that could, you know, help the world somehow. Like, and that was when it was, yes, okay, I can be a speaker. And, and, and that's the same thing. I am selling myself, right? I'm selling, you know, my knowledge or my skills and things that I've done throughout my life. Absolutely. So, and I, I knew of a lot, and so did my family, early on that I would be a speaker because I, even when I was nine, ten years of age, I would bring all the kids in our community and we would set up like theater style chairs out in the front lawn and they would all sit and I would stand on the top, the very top doorstep of the front, uh, the front porch and I would speak to them. And I've always just, I don't know why, but that's part of my DNA, speaking. I, I have been told I can inspire, I can motivate, I uplift people when I speak teach. Um, and I think that's why journey to wholeness is important to me because it helps me to get out and empower women and girls. And then when I look at my consulting business, I'm doing the same thing with women entrepreneurs and small business owners, helping them. And I always say, this is our slogan, helping extraordinary women do exceptional things, helping her to really develop and grow her brand and grow her business. Those are things that is, that's important to me. Helping so, her. So have you, what are some of the common destructions that you've seen some women do, whether it personally or in their business? What, what are some common patterns that you see? Oh, self-doubt. Um, that's a biggie, self-doubt. Self-worth, uh, denying their value. Um, Afraid to charge, that's one of the biggies that I've seen with women, not knowing how much to charge for their, uh, their services, um, not being totally clear, even though they know what they want to do, but they still aren't quite clear on how do I package this 
and make it a business where I it will generate revenue for me. And one of the others that I, well, I would say last year I, I met with several women whose husbands were telling them, you know, this business doesn't make money for you soon, then you're going to have to go get a job. So those are some of the common ones that I, I have seen with most women. Yes. And then the other is comparing themselves to someone else. Interesting. And, and a lot of it is based on other people's opinions. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. A lot of times the reason they're having that self-doubt is because of something maybe their grandma said or something maybe their husband said or, or yes. a friend or someone that said, well, you're not good enough to do that. Or what, who are you to do it? Because a lot of individuals have shared, I've had someone has said to me, why do you think you can do it? Why? And then I say, why not you? Why not you? You know, if you allow what others say, when you look at individuals like, and I always, I love these ladies. I love Martha Stewart. I love strong women. I will say that. Martha Stewart, Oprah Winfrey. Um, I use them as examples because they were women in their own strength and they knew what they wanted and they did not allow naysayers to prevent them from moving forward to accomplish the things that they have. And there are so many other Martha Stewart's and Oprah Winfrey's out there in the world today. And I say to them, don't let naysayers prevent you from becoming all that you are meant to be. You're more than a conqueror. You are. And, and that's so true is, you know, a lot of times people just listen to those opinions mm -hmm. that stop them from achieving what they want. Absolutely. So what, we're, we're, we've only got about 10 or 15 minutes left. So why don't you talk about um, your new program that you're working on and some new stuff that you're doing to help empower women to go from being, you know, destructive to, to powerful. Why don't you tell us about some of your new stuff you're doing? All right. Well, one of the things that I'm doing is the with women in business is I have created an, an eight-week program called Create Your Signature Style, where we're spending five weeks working on her brand. We're going to help her to discover, develop, and deliver her brand, and I call it the S Factor brand. And within that program, I have an image consultant who will be working with them, as well as a voice coach and a makeup and hairstylist. Because in October, I'm going to be hosting a conference. And all of the women who attend the signature program, uh, virtual program, they will be able to attend the conference in October as part of the package. And the image consultant, the voice coach, and the makeup and hairstylist, they are going to work with them before the day of the event, and we're going to roll out the red carpet, and they're going to take the red carpet on the day of the conference. And as they're roll, coming, walking down the red carpet, we're going to videotape her, interview her, and that video will be placed on YouTube and on her website. We really want to get her out there in a big way. And the other thing that I'm doing, I'm hosting uh, an intimate, a very intimate workshop uh, for 25 women where we are discussing build your brand, grow your business. It's an all-day workshop to bring clarity to her brand. And the other, the last thing is, of course, embrace your DNA. I do that every year. I, I do it in my home and I treat the women uh, as special, well, as special as they are. And we work on embracing her DNA, finding out exactly where she's stuck and what we need to do to get her moving. So we have a wonderful time during that. So that's what I have going on right now. Well, that, is, that sounds like you're doing some great stuff. What's your website? Well, I have two websites. For Journey to Wholeness is journey to to wholeness.com and there's Pringle Biz, B I Z Consulting.com. The Pringle Biz Consulting uh, website is under construction right at the present time. We're going through some rebranding and we're having that redesigned. But it is Pringle Biz Consulting.com. Thank you. 
Well, and people can also go to my website, conversationswithkelly.net, and I have a button on there for your website, Linda, so people can Thank just go you. directly to your website from there. So, because, uh, yeah, because I noticed you weren't able to put your website up so people can't write it down or anything, but in case they forgot, just go to conversationswithkelly.net and you can reach her website from right from my site. So, Thank you. And you I, are very welcome. And I'd like to say to anyone who listened in tonight, if... If you're stuck, if you're feeling that your life isn't all that you want it to be and you need help, I am offering to everyone a 45-minute complimentary session and all you have to do is just send me an email and we'll get you scheduled and we'll talk for 45 minutes and I guarantee you after the 45 minutes you will see a difference, I guarantee you that. And you can just send me an email at Linda, that's Linda with an I, Linda at Linda Pringle Evans dot com. Thank you, Kelly. You're very welcome. So thank you very much for making such a great offer, Linda. So I just want to talk a little bit more about my program that I am launching in February, and then we're going to wrap up the show. So oh. uh, my program is called You're More Than Enough, and you know, it, it, it really started because of a friend of mine who committed suicide. And she only had one arm and she, she hung herself. And I was talking to my coach and this suicide really, really hit me hard. And I said, why is this suicide hitting me so hard? When some of my, you know, other friends who have died, I don't even, I'm not, I wasn't even grieving that much. Whereas with her, I was really, really grieving. And she said, Kelly, she said, here's the thing, it's all about being your more than enough. Mm. And my friend never felt enough. She never felt like she was pretty enough. She never felt like she was smart enough, that she was successful enough. She never felt like she was enough. And I figured out that my new program is going to be called You're More Than Enough. Because even me, with the ugly scars on my face and my body, you can't tell, but my arms and my chest and my back are just covered in scars. And even with all the scars, I found a way to feel more than enough. Mm -hmm. And I found a way to go from self-destructive to powerful. And yeah. it's only because of the eight modules that I've put together that I've figured out how to do it. You know, so many people were asking me, Kelly, how do you walk out the door with the scars on your face? And I was like, what choice do I have? So I want to take you on that journey, and I really want to help you to end the destruction that's going on in your life, end the chaos, and start shifting so that you can start loving yourself. And then you can have the life that Linda's talking about, where you are magnetized to everything that you want and desire in your life. And where you can feel totally blessed that you have the great husband and you've got the great life and the great job and the great everything that you want. But you need to learn how to stop being destructive. And you need to learn how to, you know, stop drinking yourself to death. You know, you need to learn to stop gambling. You need to learn how to stop beating yourself up and you have to stop, you know, feeling worthless. Absolutely. I mean, I've got a whole module just on self-worth and value. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing when you can start valuing yourself and realize that you are worth it. Absolutely. So if you're interested in the program, I've got a couple things happening. One is the program is 997, but for our viewers, it's only 497. And you're able to make some easy payments if you want because I know money can be tight for some people and I'm willing to work with you to help you get this program. But another way that I can help you get this program is because a couple of our other guests have offered to sponsor people for free. So, and I've decided to match them. So if you really, really, really want to take this program and you really believe you deserve it, send us an email and we are going to be selecting. So far we've got 10 spots available. So if you want to be a part of that, we would love to have you because believe me, that is all that you know, Linda and I and some of my other guests want. We want to see you create the life that you love because it's amazing when you start attracting all those wonderful, beautiful things in your life. So go to my website, conversationswithkelly.net, 
and you can send me an email and I would love to you know give out those 10 sponsorships because I believe they're they're worth it and you deserve it and um, I also want to introduce my next guest who is Mars Engel and Linda do you know Mars? No I do not. No. no. Well you'll have to come and listen tomorrow night. She's another amazing woman who is you know making changes and transformations in this world and I'm just so excited that we're going to get to dig out her secrets and her golden nuggets and see what she's going to share too. So, so Linda, do you have any last few words that you want to share with everybody? Yes, I do. I would like to say to all of our listeners, believe in you. Truly believe in who you are. Learn to accept yourself. Know that you have been designed for greatness and that you do have power. You have the power to make the changes that you want for your life. But it starts with you believing in yourself. So I ask that you do that starting at this very moment. Believe in how valuable you are, your self-worth. You are important and you mean, you have great meaning to make a difference in this world. So I say go out and do it. This is okay. truly my pleasure. Well, thank you again, Linda, because I totally enjoy chatting with you and I hope everybody got lots out of it. And, um, you know, I just want to say one quote and it's a quote that I came up with. Okay. And it's, dreams are meant to be found not tucked away in dreamland. So thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Goodbye.